This is the OnePlus 9, the flagship of OnePlus this year and it's a great phone for the price you pay for it. Or is it? The phone does not have optical image stabilization which even their mid-range phone OnePlus Nord has? OnePlus has to be kidding, right? It is also lacking wireless charging in India which is present in the rest of the world. OnePlus has also released a watch at $159, a really competitive price I should say, but it is lacking a lot of features which other smartwatches consist of. Since the beginning of last year, OnePlus has started to focus on flagship smartphones which is no means a bad thing. I'm not criticizing OnePlus for not being an enthusiast brand and starting to be more of a mainstream brand. No, that is not what I'm talking about. It is just some of the decisions that OnePlus has been taking which is really odd and that is what pushed me to give this video a title like this. In order to learn what happened to one of my favorite brands, let's start from the beginning, shall we? BBK Electronics is a company which has given birth to three of the biggest Chinese smartphone companies. First one is Vivo, second one is Oppo, and then third comes OnePlus. On 16th of December 2013, OnePlus was started by the vice president of Oppo, Pete Lau, and Carl Pei. The company's main goal was to design a smartphone that would balance high-end quality with a low price that other phones in its class which it 100% delivered on. After the establishment of OnePlus, their first product to the market was the OnePlus One, which was unveiled in April of 20, 2014 exclusively for the OnePlus website but initially required an invite in order to purchase it and by 2015 it lo no longer required an invite to purchase the smartphone. The OnePlus One consisted of a flagship processor at a price of $299 and was deemed the first flagship killer. As OnePlus was part of BBK Electronic, it shared its manufacturing with other companies which was owned by BBK, which was Oppo. This led to Oppo and OnePlus a being a rebranded version of the Oppo Find 7 spec to spec just with one change that being the software. The OnePlus One was also liked for its stock Android feel which was provided by CyanogenMod. After years passed by and OnePlus gradually started to increase the price of their smartphones also by providing the specs for the price. The OnePlus flagships from the past couple of years have been really great for the price that you pay and you also used to receive the latest Android updates. I'm, say I'm saying used to because nowadays you do receive it but it is either buggy or not stock Android. Shifting away from stock Android is not a bad decision but that is not the experience which people paid their money for and these days the software updates have also been buggy. It is a rough time for OnePlus. It is signifying that OnePlus has been changing and evolving into something bigger than what the enthusiasts want the company to be and that is the reason why OnePlus has decided to settle. OnePlus was using their motto never settle until they were an enthusiast brand but now they are not anymore. They have been trying their best in order to appeal to consumers who have the least knowledge about tech and that brings us to Hasselblad. Hasselblad is a Swedish manufacturer of medium format cameras, photographic equipment and image sensors. Hasselblad camera was used during the Apollo program missions when the first humans landed on the moon. Also Hasselblad makes really expensive tech and this helps general consumers to think that if OnePlus 9 and OnePlus 9 Pro have Hasselblad slap, slapped onto their back and in every promotional material, then this camera should be one of the best in the industry, which it is not. This brings me to the injustice that OnePlus has done with India. India used to be one of the best selling markets for OnePlus as OnePlus used to make affordable flagships and India is one of the most price competitive smartphone markets in the entire world. This brings us full circle now from where this video initially started and the OnePlus 9 does not have optical image stabilization in their camera which every flagship this year has. Even their mid-ranger OnePlus Nord has optical image stabilization and also the first OnePlus One has optical image stabilization. If you think that is being picky and I should go easy on them, 
then now you know that OnePlus 9 in India also does not have 15 watt of wireless charging which the international version of the phone has. There are only two 5G bands in the Indian version and the US version has 9 to 12 bands. This is not a huge issue as 5G in India is not completely available. But still, if you are a previous OnePlus user and want to switch to this phone for 5G, you can't now. It would be useless in the next couple of years. OnePlus has said that they will be pushing an update to unlock 5G as this is a licensing issue rather than not having a 5G chip inside of it. But as Marquez says, you should buy the product for what it is today than what the product will be tomorrow. Another big problem with OnePlus 9 is that it also does not support HDR10, but the OnePlus 9 Pro does. I would say that they should have given HDR10 display if you ask me because this is pushing users to buy the more expensive OnePlus 9 Pro instead of that being just a premium offering to the OnePlus 9 lineup. Then there comes the OnePlus 9R. I have no words to describe this phone at all. This is one of the worst phones that OnePlus has made till date. It is essentially a rebranded version of the OnePlus 8T with a slightly better processor and cameras with no hassle that tinkering in it. The, one, the phone looks exactly the same as OnePlus 8T but is slightly cheaper than the 8T. The cameras of the phone for the price you pay, it is really bad. I was expecting some sort of a OnePlus Nord 2 or something which I think will come later this year. They could have increased the price of OnePlus 9 uh, also and kept the features but they removed essential features of a flagship and called it a flagship. The Hasselblad branding which the OnePlus 9 and 9 Pro consists of is just basically a marketing tactic by OnePlus and nothing else. All Hasselblad has done is make some kind of an algorithm which helps them in correcting the colors in the image. It's basically taking the help of AI in order to make your image look as pleasing as possible and it does a great job at that but not most of the time. You can check out Mr. Who's the Boss's video on this topic. Basically to sum it up, it is a color filter for your lens. The best part of it, this is that OnePlus could have done it themselves without the help of another brand. After all, they're owned by BBK Electronics, which make Oppo and Vivo phones, which have good cameras. But instead, they went with Hasselblad in wasting their money on making a phone which stands out from the rest of the crowd, but deep down is just an ordinary phone. A company like OnePlus few years ago was not willing to give an IP rating for their phone because it costs more money for the end consumer to have basically added another company's branding behind their phone in order for it to act as a color filter. Hasselblad is not even making dedicated sensors or anything as far as we know for the future OnePlus phones. Now coming to the watches made by OnePlus, their first attempt at a smartwatch which is cheaper than the rest of the competition. Does it sound like OnePlus One all over again or what? But that is where the similarities end. For bringing the product to an affordable price, they have cut way too many corners than they should have. First of all, it does not have a reply to notifications. This is one of the things that I am sure every smartwatch user has and it is useful. But OnePlus decided to not give this feature. Then what difference is there between a smart band and a smartwatch? which can only show you notifications but does not let you reply to notifications. Secondly, OnePlus Watch is not running in Wear OS, which is a smartwatch OS made by Google. It is running some dedicated version of an OS which looks like Wear OS but it is not Wear OS. Also it does not have a selective range of watch faces. This is not a huge issue but the first, one, first two are. So looking at all of this just makes me think that OnePlus has finally settled. That was it for the video. My name is Harish Srinivasan and I'll meet you guys in the next video.